What's up, catfish people? Dieter Melhorn here. I hope you're having a good day. Hey, listen, rolling down the road, heading to the boat ramp. Here's what we got going on. We got another catfish bait challenge. We're going to put bluegill up against chicken. All right, guys, I got about a dozen bluegill in the boat. I got some chicken in the cooler, so I'm going to make a run. Find me a place, anchor up, oh, see if we can get some catfish. All right, guys, made a run up the river. It's muddy. Uh, it's real muddy. Uh, a lot of debris in the water. I hit something down there. I got to check the boat out when I get back. Uh, there's current. Uh, it's not super duper fast. I think just because the rate at which they're releasing water is not super high. So it's muddy. We've got current. We're anchored up on a point and uh, a little shelter break here with uh, a little cove and a drop so we're gonna see what we can catch there it is guys a nice fat chicken breast i'm gonna split them up i've got eight rods i may fish six or eight we'll see nice chicken breast gonna cut it up into some strips use a couple of these bluegill on the tank A nice succulent bluegill. I'll get a bait off of get a head and two fillets. Now just to keep things fair, I'm gonna swap out these drifting weights. These are some of the Bone Town drifting sinkers. I'm gonna go with these pencil weights. Get those from Dale's tackle work good anchored up and casting what i'm gonna do is i've got some of these bait buddies i'll show you what they are and i'm just gonna scatter these rods around as far as what i put where there's a piece of the chicken probably should have cut that a little different get on there I've got what i call bait buddies or what the maker calls bait buddies. Let me get this sucker cast out. And get that sucker on the bottom. He's on the bottom there. And that's these things. They clip on to a rod holder. You can clip them on a rod. I'm gonna put those on every rod holder that's got chicken on it. We'll scatter the rods out, alternate them out. That way, it's a nice, fair presentation. Everything's evenly. I know when I've drifted doing this, I have uh, put them alternate or put them all on one side of the boat. But for this, one side of the boat can be better than the other, depending on where these fish are. So we'll alternate it around. It's a piece of bluegill scale off that we will put right beside this piece of chicken. Boom. Okay. I think since I can't put a bait buddy on that one, I'll put a piece of I'll put a bluegill there too. And then we'll put the bait buddies on the other ones. And we'll be fishing. Now the great thing here guys is uh, it's a one anchor setup. We got enough current that I can toss out the bow anchor and uh, it's got it pulled back nice and straight, which for us on reservoirs is a nice thing to have. A lot of times when we're anchoring, we're having, having to use double anchors uh, to keep the boat in place. I know you guys that fish rivers, uh, you really don't have to worry about that. So it's a nice day for us when we got enough current and uh, the wind's favorable that we can just throw out that bow anchor and sit in place. I'm gonna sit here about 45 minutes uh sometimes up here especially the water's been running for a full day and uh the you know fish may have fed a lot i don't know we'll see uh but i'm gonna sit here for a little while 45 minutes an hour give it a good long soak and then probably go to do some hole hopping after that just try some different places see if we can find the fish i went ahead and just stuck with uh six rods all of them sand tea rigs that way my bait can float up off the bottom just a little bit in the current 
We're gonna see if we can stick one. Boom, got a rod going right there. One of the Big Cat Fever rods. Oh, y'all see that? It's on the chicken. I am not kidding. Not kidding. Off the uh, deep side in the channel. This is on chicken. Just looking at the. Uh... Okay. There we go. Look at that. Look at that go. Look at that go. Oh, yeah. Going down. Going down. Oh. Ooh. It's a feisty fish. That is a feisty fish. For once, my boga grip's on the right side of the boat. Oh, he's in another line. It's a good blue, good teener blue. Oh, barely hooked in the bottom of the mouth. Let's hope we can get that sucker in. Get Tanner Blue. He say, he say, get that mouth open. Got him. Got him. Yes, sir. That a piggy. It's a chicken eating fool. You couldn't pass up that chicken, could you? Ah, oh, dang. I can't believe that. Amazing. Pretty fish. Looks like a male. Not beat up bad, bad. He's happy to be here. Back in the water. Alright guys, got one going. This one is on the bluegill. I just put this rod back out. Now what's funny is I swapped the rods around because of the uh, just when I put them back out. So the chicken's over here. But this is in the same rod holder that the uh, chicken one came off of. It looks like a better fish. These are coming off the river channel side. A little deeper side. That may be a better fish. That could be a good fish. We got a little bit of current here, but it's not crazy. Very manageable with these medium action big cat fever rods. Mild current, maybe three quarter mile an hour. Not bad at all. Oh yeah. Whacking that head, whacking that head. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, big boy. Rolling now like a blue, up on top of the water. Going back down. And fish, I was wondering when these suckers were gonna bite. There he goes. There you guys. Drop him. Oh. oh, he is all kinds of wrapped up. Get off that dorsal fin. There we go. Another teener. Another solid teener. Big male, dark colors. Hey. Teens, simmer. I'm gonna let you. Don't go to slapping. Come on. Got to get a good picture. Darkening up. You're looking fish there, guys. Or even though, we got one on bluegill and one on chicken. Well, there's two fish in the boat. Both about the same size, mid teeners. Uh, they both came off of the same side of the boat, over toward the river channel, deeper water. Uh, a slight bias to that side of the boat. Uh, there's probably more chicken baits there, but I don't know, it's kind of evenly split. Uh, I'm just gonna sit here for a little while now. I've got two bites. Uh, it's not on fire with a bunch of bites, but uh, that's enough action that it warrants sitting here another half hour. So look at my timer and see how far I'm into this sit. Right at 55 minutes. I've been here almost an hour. So two fish, that's a good bite, good catch rate, especially to have two teeners. So I'll give it another half hour. We'll go ahead and say that now. We'll take it to the 90 minute mark and see if we get on some more. 
Uh, hopefully some stuff comes over here out of some of these other areas. Uh, just be curious to see. Still got water moving, nice and slow and steady, still muddy. Let's see uh, which one performs better. We got us an Eda, and it's on the chicken. Oh, I'm gonna suck it back coming this way. There we go. Is he still there? Is he coming up the boat? He's coming up the boat. Yep. Guys, this fish is in a new location. Uh, I made a move. I fished down there for till my 90 minute mark and uh, decided to make a move. That's a smaller blue. A bit of blue nonetheless. And a chicken blue. Get him in here. Big old full belly. Oh, I should have shouldn't have put that old thumb in that mouth. You didn't like that, did you? Huh? You didn't like that. Did you lesson? Dude, look at that belly. Look at the belly on that sucker. Look at that gut. That looks like my belly. Look at that. Good fish on the chicken. There's my marker tag on there. How? Boom, I was just checking the bait on. A reposition the rod, I should say. I noticed this one was swimming off. Old Pinky had to retool her. She had to go to the doctor. The Dieter doctor. The Dieter real doctor. You get across some of these lines. He's going up shallow. Wow, I'm just going to make this easier on myself. I'm over here on this side of the anchor. Yeah, old Pinky paw wore out on it. And I had to fix it. I got a little video up about it. Turns out a Paul out of an Abu Garcia will fit it. Oh, that's a bigger fish than I thought. Oh, there he goes. Knows there's a boat here now. Good tea. Oh, nice teener. Nice teener sized fish. <laughs> Bluegill come back to tie it up. Bluegill got the bigger fish today, though. Work him over here. Oh, he's barely hooking top of the mouth. He may be close to 20. Oh, come on. Don't look a jerk. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's a recipe for disaster right there. Grabbing that hook in the top of the mouth. A recipe for disaster. It's dark. I'm dark loving. Usually I go dark, clear water, dark in this muddy stuff. It's a good one. Get him back alive. Tied up the score. Be sure your fin clears. Boom. All right, guys, that's fish uh, number two in the boat from this spot. Fish number four total. Two and two on uh, the baits. It's split even so far. That's the biggest fish. Uh, that was close to 20 pounds. Uh, and it came on bluegill. So uh, we've got another one in the teens on bluegill, another one in the teens on chicken, and then that smaller one there on chicken. So all blue so far, no, no channel cats biting. Uh, they've all come out of the river channel, same at the last location. Uh, so what I may do, I'm gonna give it another 30 minutes here. I've been there about a half hour, I'll give it to the hour mark. And uh, I'm gonna reposition the boat, find another deeper ditch to anchor in and uh, just anchoring that deeper river channel, the old river channel. Uh, seems like that's where the fish are. I don't know if they're in there because of the constant current or what, but we'll try that and see what else the lake gives us. All right, I've either got a fish or I'm dragging a stick. That's a fish. Sticks don't shake their head. <laughs> oh, that one's on chicken too. That's crazy. That one's going back that way. He's on a chicken bait. Feels like a decent fish. He's in that line. He's going to be in a couple of lines. I'm going to have to reposition some stuff, I can tell. I'm trying to get him to this side of the boat. I tried to place, and it was really bad. The way the wind was blowing, it was sweeping me into a bunch of crap, so I moved. I didn't stay there 15 minutes. Came down here, set up in the river channel like I was talking about earlier. And uh, 
I picked up pretty quick, fish number five. Just, oh, he's barely hooked. He is barely hooked. Let y'all see him. I'm not gonna be able to lift that sucker in by the leader. I'm gonna try to boga this fish. It's gonna be a one-shot deal, I think. <laughs> Look at this hook. Look at this hook. That sucker is barely in there. Okay. Yeah, right, let's get all this stuff on. Coming on chicken. Chicken's in the lead. <laughs> Alright guys, I've worked this section of the river for about mm, I don't even know what time I left. Probably four hours. Uh, I got five fish in the boat. Three of them on chicken. Uh, it's like every time I roll up in a hole, I catch the fish pretty quickly. And then after sitting a while, there's nothing. So uh, I'm going to give this eh, maybe just a few more minutes. Maybe pop one more spot and uh, take off back down the lake. There's a fish. There's a fish on the bluegill. On the bluegill. I think it's a small fish. Just about ready to move out of here. I got this one. Yeah, that's a small one. Small fish, but it ties the score up. Three to three. Channel cat, get him in the house. Big channel cat too. E C. E C. I got you, Beth. Let me get that out of your whisker. Pal, piece of the bluegill, little channel cap. There you go, guys. Six fish, three piece. Very, very interesting. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, and here are a couple of more videos that I think you're gonna like.